Welcome guys, let's get right into this tutorial. Excel has now introduced Python. You can now use the power of Python to process data within Excel. Keep in mind that the Python calculations run within Microsoft Cloud, so it does not run locally on your computer. I'll we'll link my previous video to show you how to enable Python within Excel if you have not already done so. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. Now, this is a beginner's tutorial for anyone who is looking to utilize Python within Excel. Okay, so now we have Excel open and we are going to go to Formulas and Insert Python. We're going to click on the icon and now we see the PY cell. There are several ways to initialize Python in Excel and this was one of them. The second way is typing equals PY and then open parentheses. A third way of initializing Python is a shortcut key method. So we will hit Control, Alt, Shift, and P, and that will initialize Python as well. We could expand the command line window by typing Control, Shift, and U. And then if we want to close it, we just type that again. Control, Shift, U. Okay, so now let's type in our first string, our first statement within Python within Excel. And again, we notice that little busy signal, and that's just reminding us that Python is actually running in Microsoft Cloud. And what I'm, I'm typing here, control enter, that is actually committing the code. And then when I hover over this little icon here, it's just showing us that this is a string. It's showing us the type. So it's saying that our Python object is a string. And now where I'm clicking, it gives us the option to show or display the icon or to show the value. And here we are clicking on diagnostics to see what, if there's an error message, this is kind of like our console. And now I'm clicking on the initialization and this is showing us what are the preloaded packages that are within this environment. However, we can always load additional packages. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create a variable. We're going into the cell 10, uh, A10. We're saying A equals five. Oh, I didn't initialize it. You see how I'm just putting A equals five. So now I'm doing equals pi, open parentheses, and now I'm doing A equals five. Perfect. Press enter. And now I'm doing B equals 10. And now we're going to commit that. So control enter. It showed busy and now it's showing the output. It shows us the last line, B equals 10. So that's what we see there. Okay, so now I'm creating another variable, C equals A plus B. So what will be the output of this? Oh, I didn't initialize it. Let me go ahead and equals pi. Okay, so C equals A plus B. And now we're going to commit that. Control enter. We've got 15. Perfect. And now I'm just going to control X and move this above the initial declaration. Okay, so we see that we get an error. Hmm, okay, so why is that? So let's go into the documentation. Okay, so the documentation tells us that in, a, in Python within Excel, the Python cells calculate in row major order. So the cell calculations run across a row and then across each following row down the worksheet. So if we look at the what we were trying to do in the tab, we cut out that statement and then we put it above the initial defining reference. So it's getting confused, right? Because I'm taking this, I'm copy, I'm control X, right? So I remove this, put it above the initial declaration. So now when I put it under, it's now saying, okay, because it's defined and then we get our calculation. I hope that wasn't too confusing, but basically it's just, it doesn't know where to look for, it's almost as if those cells were not defined. That's exactly. So it's like those cells were not defined and so it got confused and it gave us an error. So now we're going to go into our second tab and we've got a, we've got this tabular data here. It was looking at cars, make, model, and the quantity of cars. And I'm going to show you how we are going to create a data frame and a data frame. It's similar to what we see here, like a spreadsheet, right? It's just, it has rows and columns and it contains data. So we're defining it as DF equals, and we highlight the whole data frame. And now look, 
it's showing us all of our data within this data frame. So we've defined our data frame as DF and it contains the content of what we see above. We can go to our icon, we can click the Excel value, and now we see those same exact values here. But this condenses it if we click the Python object. So now our data frame is stored within that object, DF. So now we are going to show a built-in method that uses that will show us descriptive statistics of our data frame. So all we do is type dot describe, open and close parentheses. And when we run, look at that. We now have the count, the mean, the standard deviation, the min, and the percentiles. This is awesome. So this can work with any data frame, any data set. It just gives us a cool descriptive statistics summary. So we can also do the Excel value and we see that descriptive statistics as values. So I thought that was pretty neat. And there are other methods that you can use. I will link the documentation below, but is the Python documentation. We could also gather data from other sources. Showing you here, right? If I wanted to grab it from another workbook or another worksheet, I can go ahead and do that. So this is just give an example and it's using Power Query. So all I would do is just point to where I would like to import my data and then load that data in. As you see, there's our data. So we can do, we can perform Python methods and functions and scripts on our data that we've imported in. There are other sources that we can pull from. I can come here as you just go to get data. I just, I kind of went over that really quick. So I'm just showing you again, you just go to data, get data. And here are all the other sources, database, Azure, Power Platform, different files. So this is pretty cool and it's super powerful. And here's just a snippet of the pandas.pydata.org documentation. Please, please read this over. It's nothing like actually looking at the source and looking at the documentation. This is how you really learn and also by doing, by practicing. So I will link that below. And now let's look at our tab called chart. So of course with Excel, there are many graphs, many visualizations that you could use, but when we go under the recommendations for this particular data, when we go to recommended charts, nothing comes up. It's telling us that we have to choose, basically it's not giving us a recommended chart. So that's where the power of Python and Pandas comes into play. So I'm going to initiate a cell and then I'm going to highlight, nope, I did something wrong. I want to store this data frame in a variable. So let's do that again. So let's initialize, nope, nope, let's go back. Let's initialize, okay, equals pi. And then we are going to, Okay, so we're going to see that this is going to cause an error because I didn't, I did not label, I did not put this into a variable, but let's just go ahead and forward with this. So we went ahead and we've ingested the data frame, but we didn't label it anything. And now what I'm going to do is I want to create a Gantt chart and I am using chat GPT. Yes, I'm using chat GPT. So all I did was ask it. I have this type of data and I would like to create a Gantt chart. Please give me the code on how to do this. So you can use Bing. Bing, I believe has chat GPT four. I just went directly to chat GPT four, but if you do not have that, of course use Bing. So what I did was I copy and I pasted the code, but do you see here it's looking for a DF. And that's where we're going to have an error because I didn't, if you remember before, I did not initialize. I did not put my data frame in it within a variable. It didn't store it in a variable. So let's go forward with this. So I put in the code and it's giving me an error and it keeps saying key error start. I'm kind of trying to figure out why it's saying that because all of my column names are correct. We do have the start column name. What I did here is just I imported matplotlib dates. So that will help with this script. And now I ran it again. 
and it's still giving an error. So I'm like, hmm, what can this be? So I'm just going back into the code, not realizing that I didn't save it under a data frame under DF. So it's pretty simple, but sometimes you, like this is troubleshooting and debugging, right? Where you're like, okay, where's the error at? Sometimes it could be very, very simple and you just don't realize it. This was one of these. Um, so anyway, I eventually I realize, okay, it's because DF. So I go ahead, I check my data frame. I think right now I'm just checking the column headers. And that's when I see, oh, it's because it's not saved under DF. I did not declare DF. I did not save this data frame within our within a variable. So now I'm doing that. So DF equals, and then I go ahead and I highlight all the data. And then I go ahead and run the code and now image pop. If you've learned anything new from this video, please do not hesitate to subscribe, like, and comment. Okay, so now we see the image. Cool, so it actually created our Gantt chart, but if we look at the time, it looks all jumbled up. You see that at the bottom? So the dates look really, so it's given us a beautiful visualization, but the dates are all jumbled up. So I'm going back into the code. And so I'm just checking here where it's showing the date time. So I see here under the date formatter, you see how it's adding the hour and the second. So I just removed that and now I'm going to control enter again and run the code, run the script again. So now let's check the image and we see this looks a lot better. And of course you can play around with this. If you want hours and minutes and seconds, then it's just a matter of you can type into chat GPT or you can research the documentation. It's best to understand the underlying concepts so you have an idea and an understanding of how script works. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you in the next video.